guys, always keep a lookout for vintage handbags or purses. Sometimes they're made of leather. Sometimes they're made of exotic animal skins like alligator or, um, you know, some things like um, ostrich or, or things like that. Uh, really kind of cool. This one is hand beaded and you can see all these different beads. Uh, really neat. Probably from the 1960s or 1970s. The stitch work is incredible. It's in really good condition. And I just paid $12 for it in the state sale today. Uh, inside, also, you can see if I can open this little pesky thing up here. Really nice condition inside. No stains. It's got the tag intact. Keep a lookout for this stuff, guys. You'd be surprised at how much they can bring. Look at this stinking cool old whiskey bottle, guys. Seagram's rare old whiskey. The age statement is six years. A couple of things. On the bottom here, you can see right here where the pontal, where they had used to blow this thing, was attached. It's scratchy. They didn't really clean it up. Uh, you can tell by that that it's an old bottle. Um, really cool script on there. It says it's from Canada. It says 1931 on it. On the back, it says it's been aged in oak casks. It's six years old, but here's the coolest part, guys. The label's still intact, 1929. That's the year the stock market crashed, guys. This is the year that this was uh, labeled and uh, imported into the United States to be consumed. Super cool bottle. Probably could get 40 to $50 from this, uh, even in the condition that it's in uh, without any liquid in it, because the labels are intact. Anytime you want to find one of these, make sure the labels are as good a quality as possible. Believe you me, folks, whenever people are out on the golf course, it happens all the time. People will take the, the uh, covers and the sleeves off of their woods or their irons, and they'll either forget it on the ground, it'll fall off the golf cart, fall out of their bag, something like that, and they lose them. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, shoot, I've got this full set of golf clubs, I'm missing one thing. So they'll get on eBay and they'll look for um, ones to replace. And so I came across these at a thrift store. It's a one wood and a three wood uh, cover for woods, and it's a Nike brand, and they look pretty new, in very nice condition, no stains or tears. And so, uh, guys, these one of these sold recently on eBay for $17.00. 99 cents plus shipping i got two of them and i only paid 50 cents a piece so i'm a dollar into these i bet i'll be able to get 30 to 36 dollars total for this keep a lookout for this even iron sleeves sell and if they're a good brand they'll sell fast how to cousins rusty here here's the deal folks i came across this 45 for 50 cents at a thrift store locally atlantic oceans by youth i don't know this band at all folks but i could tell when i saw it that it was newer probably from the 90s or even newer than that and it's also labeled number eight of 100 so pretty cool here's the other cool thing uh i have not even looked up the price yet but anytime you can find 45s from the 90s or newer they can sell for a lot of money because there just weren't a lot being made back then here's the cool thing guys look at the color of that if i pull it out look at that sucker somebody had a cool idea cool design don't know if the music is any good or not but uh, i think that just because of what it is it'll sell pretty well certainly more than 50 cents hey cousins rusty here again Guys, I neglected to put this in the big video drop today, but it's this beautiful little geode here. I paid $10 for this. Um, some people might say I overpaid. I think I'll actually make some money on it. Um, definitely the crystals and that kind of purplish hue is beautiful, but actually the prettiest part to me is this outer section here. I don't know if, um, if this uh, would be considered jasper. Uh, I guess it would, uh, because it is opaque. It's got this beautiful color to it. But on the outside, I mean, this is just what it looks like when they find it. It's just this big old rock, uh, kind of ugly. But man, that polishes up and cuts real pretty. Uh, I can't wait to throw this up. Guys, minerals and rocks, rock collections, if you can find those and source them and get them for cheap, they can sell for boatloads. I have a buddy locally. This is what he's been living off for the last five years. Just incredible. How to cousins, guys. I paid $10 a piece for each of these pieces of jewelry today at an estate sale. One of them's worth about $20, one's worth about $35, and one is worth between $275 and $350. Which one do you think it is? Is it this? Is it that sucker? What about that? Guys, the most valuable one is the dragonfly. This right here. It's a piece of sterling silver. It's marked clearly on the back. Paid $10, probably worth about $20. This right here is a monogram brooch. It's 12 karat gold filled. 
probably worth about 35 from the early 1900s. But this one, folks, they missed the tiny, tiny mark on the upper left at the back here that says 14K. What this is, 14 karat gold, diamonds on each of the wings, cultured pearls, and two blue sapphires for the eyes. Guys, don't assume that it's costume jewelry. Always check for marks. Folks, I came across these old uh, salt and pepper shakers here. I don't usually pick these things up, but <clears throat> they weren't that expensive, and they were kind of baffling me. I kind of got them because I wanted to research them and learn about it, but there's these little dogs here. If you look here on the top, they're about the same. They could be either salt or pepper, either one of them. These little doggies' heads, they screw right off here, and you can see that inside it's nice and shiny. Um, I wasn't quite sure what uh, type of material it was. Seeing that silvery color makes me think that maybe it was silver plated. <clears throat> but if you look on the bottom here, you can see uh, a mark. And I'm going to have to do my research on this because I'm not familiar with it. It is WG. It looks like either two zeros or maybe co. And then it says 133. I'm not familiar with the number 133 on metal. So I don't know if that is in reference to a certain cast <clears throat> casting model like this was cast, or if it's something in a series. But you got these arrows on either side, a W and a G. It's real cool. Usually things are marked around the rim of stuff on, on, on stuff like this uh, or on the bottom like that. So always take a look. And you got usually you got a phone in your pocket. Pull that sucker out, do a little bit of research. I was not familiar with this, so I'm going to have to look it up. Hopefully, if I come across something, I can come back and let you know. But they're pretty cool either way. Real dark and kind of scuffed. I'm wondering if these are silver plate. It's possible to polish these up. And uh, I might start in on it. Someone asked me recently, like, how I go about doing that. Usually just use a regular type of a silver polish with a toothbrush or a rag. But uh, anyhow, these probably will polish right up. Uh, maybe we'll try that again soon. Just wanted to show you, kind of a neat find. People definitely buy salt and pepper shakers. There's a lot of people out there uh, who collect those, and there's a ton of different types. And right here, you know who I'm looking at? Oh, it's just Nipper. It's the old RCA dog. You remember that guy. I bought this whole lot, guys, for $30. It's entirely vintage RCA Astro uh, Electronics uh, branded items. Nipper the dog. Uh, I've got a full video showing all of these goodies that I got. I paid $30 for all of this. Not quite sure what I'll get for it all, but come explore it with me. Go look at the Rusty How To channel. You can see the whole thing.